Yes. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Steve Heinrich, the Head of Scientific Computing at the Francis Crick Institute in London. Uh, I'm joined today by Michael Holliday, our storage lead, who I'll be handing over to in a minute. Um, the, so the Crick, actually, this week is t uh, two years since we officially opened. Uh, and we'll show you some, some pictures of that, and the, including the Queen opening the, uh, or pressing a button to do some sequencing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there at that point, so I, I joined the Crick in September 2017, so I've been there a little bit over a year. Um, but we're big ZDN users, so as, as we'll get to in a bit, our, uh, so all our research computing platform storage is on ZDN. Uh, and it's currently about, well, there's about 10 petabytes capacity. Uh, we're about half full and filling up fast. So, um, so yeah, we, well, at some point we may be back for some more. Who knows? But. How big is your team? Uh, so I've got 20 people in the team all together. Uh, and so scientific computing at the Crick doesn't just include HPC. So that's the obvious one. Uh, and so one of the, the great things... I think is, you know, as well as having really good support for HPC and storage and, and you know, big data, big compute, we also cover um, databases uh, and also um, digital. So we've got a database team, digital team, and a, a sort of research software engineering team as well. So we can actually work with the scientists to, to actually, you know, so they can do science with the stuff. So there's no point, I always say to the team, we can have the best kit in the world, and we, you know, I wouldn't say we've got the best in the world, but we've got some fantastic kit. It doesn't do anyone any good unless the scientists can actually use it and do science on it. So I know you've got some slides on this, but tell us, how did the Crick come about? What was the whole thinking originally? Like, must be in five, ten years? So or? it's probably, yeah, it's certainly more than five, probably slightly less than ten. So the, um, the original thinking for the Crick started know, a long time ago, uh, and it was looking to set up a, a new biomedical research institute for the UK and bringing together expertise from a range of different sources. So in particular, there were two... So when, when I came to the Crick, you know, this big, shiny new building, you think, oh, no, this is all new. And actually, we, had, we were formed from merging two previous institutes, so both in, both in London, one of which was, was owned by the, the UK Medical Research Council uh, and one by uh, Cancer Research UK, a charity. Uh, and so they both came together to form the Crick, along with a lot of new people, uh, including myself later on. So this is a test now, and, and I, without the slides, back me up. So we've got there's six six founding partners, without which we wouldn't be here. Uh, so the, again, the, the Medical Research Council, which is which is UK government funded, uh, put a, a a huge amount of capital in to actually get us started. Um, Cancer Research UK, again, one of our, our big founding partners. Um, Welcome Trust, um, who, who actually before, so before the Crick, uh, Francis Crick Institute moved into the new shiny building, you'll see in a bit, uh, we were based, based in the Welcome Trust, uh, and we've still, so we've still got very close links and a lot of, a lot of funding through them. Um, so that's, that's those three. There's also three of the leading London universities, uh, so that's UCL, Imperial College, and King's College. So there's, there's six founders, so we're in a, quite a unique position with that strength, strength of, and, and strength and breadth of support. <laughs> I'm not going to do the DDN talk, I'll say that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably talk, I'll use half the slides now probably anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go on. That's fine. Let's turn that on. Right, so I think we've done this bit, but so I'm here to talk about our research computing storage platform. So I've already done, already done the introductions. And so I'll hand over to Michael in a minute, our, our storage lead. So that's the picture of the building. So two years ago this week, um, the, was the official opening. The actual moving in uh, happened a little bit before that, which was long and tortuous. And, and so I wasn't involved in that bit because I came after that. But there was a, a huge amount of work to move all the scientists and their, you know, and their equipment into the building. So we're a, so they're a biomedical discovery institute. Uh, we're actually the largest in, the U, uh, largest in Europe under a single roof. 
which is the catch. Uh, but it is quite an impressive roof, as you, as you can see from the picture there. Um, so we've done the founding partners bit. I, think I, I don't think I missed anyone else, so that's cool. So our strap line is discovery without boundaries, uh, and that's something that uh, coming to the Crick as a, as a, sort of a new person uh, a bit over a year ago, it really affects everything we do and the way we do it. So we've got seven core research areas which span pretty much the breadth of, of human health and disease and, and a lot of the you know, really big issues that we've got in the world today. So I've listed them there. So there's growth and development. So that's understanding how actually and how normal development happens and when things go wrong. Uh, aging and the effect on health. Uh, understanding human biology. And cancer. Uh, so obviously one of our founding partners is, is cancer research. So that's a big part of what we do. Uh, the immune system. Uh, and that's one of the things. So I, I started off actually with a biology degree before I defected into IT uh, a long time ago. Um, and biology has changed enormously since I was doing that, which is a long time ago now. But the immune system, you know, and any one of these, any one of these aspects, is incredibly complicated. If you look at the immune system, there are pathways upon pathways, and sort of makes my head spin. And fortunately, we've got some some of the best scientists around the world working on this stuff who do understand it much better than I do. Uh, we also look at infectious diseases. So, for example, the World Influenza Center is based at the Crick. Um, as well as we also do research into malaria, TB, uh, other diseases, and also neuroscience. So we've got people doing, uh, working out how the brain works, uh, and sort of, you know, lots of very interesting work there. So, but we're very much, you know, so part of the, the ethos of the Crick is all about, um, part of that sort of discovery without boundaries is about bringing people together. So we've, we're very multidisciplinary. So we've gathered some of the say, best scientists around the world from all sorts of different disciplines. So we've got biologists, which you'd expect, chemists, physics, mathematicians, bioinformaticians, engineers, you name it, we've pretty much got it. Uh, and the ethos is to bring them together, focused on these problems, uh, and actually using that, that breadth of knowledge. So a few numbers there. I won't go through them all, but basically it's a big building, a lot of scientists. So we've got about 1,300 scientists. Um, there's 13 floors, four of which are underground. Um, numerous instruments, uh, and one Nobel Prize winner. So our, our CEO, we're very fortunate, is uh, Sir Paul Nurse, who've got the picture there. Um, so he won the Nobel Prize back in 2001 for um, understanding fundamentals of how cells divide. Very, very clever bloke. Uh, and also, but everything he does is, you know, he's not just clever and up there, he's also very practical and he's passionate. He was involved with this, with setting up the quick right from the start, uh, and still is very hands-on today got a huge range of scientific instruments, uh, all of which, as you'll see at the bottom, or most of which kick out a lot of data. So at the top right, there, we, there's a, a Titan cryos, cryo-electron microscope. So that basically freezes samples, uh, and that then images them down to more or less atomic level. So you can actually see the individual protein structures. And, ca and so you're seeing right inside cells and you know, the, the innermost details of how things work. Uh, there's the queen in the bottom right, uh, so pressing the button on the sequencer at the opening ceremony. But we've also got you know, huge, huge ranges of other instruments, things like light microscopes. You know, as, a, as a kid at school, you, you think you might know what a light microscope means. looks like, well, that's actually one there. That's a, 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 um, a light sheet microscope, which does sort of, uh, 3D imaging. Um, so yeah, they, again, kick out an awful lot of data. So that's enough about the quick. I know you, this is the DDN user group after all, so I better mention DDN. Um, otherwise, I'll have to give my Polish shirt back. Uh, so, why, so DDN at the quick, why? So as I said at the beginning, all of our storage is based on DDN, or all of our scientific storage. We do have um, other sort of enterprise storage as well. Uh, but we chose it for a number of reasons, one of which was scalability. So as I say, we've got 10 petabytes currently um, filling up fast. Performance, because of the, you know, we've got over 100 labs all doing different kinds of research in the Crick, very, very varied workloads. So we needed high performance to be able to, to basically stand whatever gets thrown at it. Uh, also needs to be resilient. Uh, and I'm pleased to say you know, it, it's been very good. We did have a few teething troubles early on, mainly because when we moved into the building, uh, the, we moved in late, so we didn't have a time to do the normal testing that you'd want to do. So we were kind of running it at the same time as testing it, and probably Michael bears the scars. I arrived after that time, I had to say. Um, 
and also manageability. So we don't want to have our whole team, you know, loads of people running the storage, obviously you know, it's a very important job to do, but we need to have as many people as possible helping and supporting the science. So in terms of challenges looking ahead, um, data growth is one of our big ones, so we're looking at archiving at the moment. We're going to need to do that quite soon because we're going kind of running out of space otherwise. Uh, and also, there's a bit of machine learning at the quick already, but there will be a lot more, and we're putting in a, a big GPU cluster. In fact, fingers crossed, we're signing the contract today. So, um, and that will, uh, machine learning, deep learning, um, whatever you want to call it, is, is being increasingly used by, across a very wide um, areas of research. So that's going to be a much bigger thing for us. Anyway, thank you for your time. I'm going to hand you over to Michael.